Welcome to Jesus Inside Prison Ministry presents Jesus House with Dr. William Bumpus. We are providing a strong foundation in Christ and preparing men for a successful future. And now, here's Pastor Bumpus. Praise Jesus and welcome to today's program. I am your host, Pastor William Bumpus, and you're watching JIPM present Jesus House. And uh, so we're glad you have tuned into today's program. As you know, uh, Jesus Inside Prison Ministry, we go inside prison, we do prison ministry, but we also have a residential uh, facility, which is called Jesus House. And that's where men who have given their life to Christ while they're incarcerated, they can be paroled to or modified there. Modified means they come there with an ankle bracelet. And so we can house up to 50 guys. Uh, so we, I think right now we run around about 30, 35 guys there. Amen. And uh, so they're there. <clears throat> they learn how to uh, live for Christ. We have a, a strict discipleship program, Bible studies uh, twice a day, five days a week. Uh, church service is mandatory. And uh, of course, they can also get jobs. And uh, so they're, we, they learn how to serve God, basically what I'm saying. They learn how to serve God on the outside as opposed to on the inside. So that's what we do here. We come on, on TV here uh, each week, usually with a guest. Sometime I preach. Uh, I'll be sharing the message with you today. Uh, we have some book offers we want to offer to you. So we pray that you stay tuned for today's program. Uh, let's have a word of prayer in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and praise you for those that have tuned into this broadcast. Lord God, we know it's not by no accident. And uh, we pray, Father, that you would lead us to say something uh, that would encourage those that are watching this program we give you praise, glory, and honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen. As, as I said, we have an exciting program for you today. I'm going to be sharing a message uh, from the Word of God that I believe is going to really impact your life. We have some book offers. I want to encourage you to get those. That helps us uh, just hearing from you. It helps us a lot. Let's lets us know we're doing what God would have us to do. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. This month's special offer is The Secret Nation. Uh, this right here talks about the secret nation or there's a nation that are, in, that are inside prisons. In the United States of America, there's over one million folk that are incarcerated. Uh, and then you take those that is under the supervision of the Department of Corrections. And there's over five million people that's affected by the judicial system here in the United States of America. That is a whole nation. So this book talks about that. So write in, get your free copy. Amen, and welcome back. Of, of course, I'm your host, Pastor William Bumpus, and you're watching JIPM present Jesus House. We come your way each week, uh, sharing about the goodness of God and what God is doing inside prison and what he's doing in our reentry program, which is called Jesus House. Uh, today, I have a word I want to share with you, and it's found in 2 Peter chapter 2, chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, and uh, it reads, Simon Peter a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And let us know that we have <clears throat> the same kind of faith they have. If you're born again, we have the same faith that the apostles had. It says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. <clears throat> That's what I want to center in today. God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. All things. Well, what do you mean all things? Well, all things. When he says all things, I, I, I did a study. Well, I ain't going to say I did no study, but I've heard people say this and it all fits. And I've heard people say they did a study on the word all uh, in that verse. And when they studied that verse, the word all in that verse means all. In other words, God has given us all things that pertain to life. Well, what pertains to life? Well, everything you need to live in this life, God has given it to us. But here's the key. It's through the knowledge of him. In other words, the more we learn about Christ, and his word, then the more we realize what God has given unto us. If we don't get into the word and study the word, then we'll never find out what God has given unto us. You know, I had a guest on the other day uh, and he mentioned about his favorite verse. Well, uh, there's a favorite verse that we teach at the Jesus house. 
uh, I have like five priorities uh, when I teach guys. The priority number one is get off paper. In other words, get off parole. Uh, that's the first thing I want them to center on is getting off parole. So the first priority we teach guys at Jesus House is priority number one, getting off parole, and then in Matthew 6 and 33. Now, Matthew 6 and 33 is similar to what we just read, where God gives you all things that pertain to life and godliness. In Matthew 6, 33, it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. And the things it's talking about is the material things. The material things we need in life, God has provided that for us. But the way we get a hold of that is through his word. So that's the first priority that I teach guys at the Jesus house. We want them to center in on God. We don't want them to center in on getting a job. We don't want them to center in on nothing that because we want them to center in on God being their source. If we get them to rely on God being their source, even if they got a job and a job don't work and they lose the job, they still uh, haven't lost their source. You know what I mean? There's people, you know, saying to go to prison because they're they working a job. Uh, the job is their source. It's the only way they know. Then all of a sudden something happened. The downsides on the job or something happens and they lose their job. And now they're faced with a whole lot of bills and all those kind of stuff. They don't know how to believe God because they haven't been taught that. So then they have to do a little something on the side. You know what I mean? Sell a little weed on the side or do a little something on the side. And then that side eventually winds up uh, causing them a whole lifetime of going inside prison as a convict. So we teach the guys at Jesus House, they don't have to rely on that. You know, they don't have to rely on their old skills. They, all they have to do is learn how to rely on God because he said that he will provide everything that we need in life if we center on him. We have to make sure that God is our source. And I share with the guys, you know, I learned that uh, as a convict. i never forget that God worked a miracle in my life and, and I'm out of prison and he worked a miracle in my life and I'm out. So I'm out and uh, I didn't know no other life uh, except a criminal life, but I'd made my mind up. I want to live for Christ. I got four years probation when I first, when I got out of prison and I didn't know a Christian nowhere in the world. I didn't know no Christian. And I know that first week that I was out, uh, my mother told me that I could stay home, uh, that I could uh, stay with her. Well, after they gave me my parole and I went home, mama said, you got to be out by this weekend. I said, wait a minute. You told them that I could stay with you. She said, yeah, if I hadn't have told them that, they wouldn't have let you out. She said, but I know you and uh, you, got, you got to be out of here by the weekend. Well, you know, I did my best yesterday and tried to get mama saved at that time and everybody else saved, you know what I mean, because I, I didn't have no place to go. And I'll never forget on that Friday, I got out like on a, on a, on a Monday <clears throat> and that Friday, my mother put me out. And so she put me out and here I was, baby Christian, just got out of prison and I'm walking the streets of Indianapolis. I didn't have no place to go. I didn't know <clears throat> no, no uh, uh, Christian nowhere except one guy and I didn't know where he was at. And I never will forget. I made it down to, I'm walking the streets I didn't want to go around nobody who I knew, didn't have no money. I didn't have nothing. And uh, I had enough change to go to a White Castle. Uh, and I went to a White Castle and I sit there and I'm drinking coffee and I'm praying. And what I was praying <clears throat> was Matthew 6. I had learned that in prison. And so I was praying. I was talking to God. I said, Lord, your word says, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else to be added. I said, well, you know, I've been in prison. I've been serving you. I've been living right in prison. I'm out now. I don't have no place to go. I don't know where to go except to the old lifestyle. I don't want to do that. Lord, I need a place to stay. I never forget that. I'm praying like that. Well, I was impressed. To, uh, it was early in the morning. I was impressed. I had to get off the street. So I went down to another guy's house, uh, which I had worked with him uh, before, <clears throat> an older gentleman. And I felt like I would be able to go in there and rest a couple of hours. And I'll never forget, I went there, he was an alcoholic. And I went into there, and as uh, soon as I got there, he was inviting me to take something to drink. And I was telling him, no, man, I don't drink no more. And next thing I know, he was calling me a bunch of names. And, and I'm sitting there trying to rest, and I heard the Spirit of God say, get up and get out of here. Well, I get up, I walk two, I walk two blocks down the street, 
And I see a guy who I knew that used to be a dope fiend. Well, he was a dope fiend then. And so I seen him. And so I went over there and I started talking to him. I knew one person in Indianapolis that was a Christian. And this guy was a guy who was in prison with, in jail with me, who had prayed with me to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I heard that he had got out. I heard that he was serving God. I didn't know nowhere he lived at. And this guy told me, I asked him, I said, man, do you know uh, where this guy lives at? And he said, yeah, man, he's two blocks down the street. Well, this guy has started him a record shop, uh, and he was sleeping in the record shop. Well, I went down there. Never we'll forget, it was on a Saturday morning. I've been up all night. I went down there and knocked on the guy's door. He was in there. He seen, seen that I was out. He took me to his church that night. I hadn't been baptized in water. He took me to his church that night. I invited a few guys who I had met in jail. They came to my water baptism at Saturday. Then one of the guys that came said, man, said, uh, uh, his name was Butch, said, man, Butch said, you don't have no place to live. I said, no. He said, well, my father is refurbishing some apartment buildings, and I can get you a place. And just like that, he called his father. His father gave me a place to stay free of charge. And then I'm in there and uh, had a phone. And then the guy who gave me, his father gave me the place, he called me. And uh, he says, is everything going good? And I said, yes. And I had looked up under the bed, and there was some clothes in there. And I said, man, whose clothes are these? He said, well, those are my clothes. Said me and my wife was having some problems, and I moved there for, for a little while. He said, everything in that house there, uh, in that apartment that you can wear, consider it yours. And I looked up, and I had clothes to wear. I had a place to, uh, to live. I had a church to go to, and I had people, all because of Matthew 6 and 33. Now, that proved to me that I could count on God for anything. And that's where I got my start. If it hadn't been for that, I would have probably went to prison that night because I was walking the streets of Indianapolis, and I was seeing stuff to steal. And the only thing that kept me from doing that was that verse had been ingrained in my spirit where God said, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added. That's just like that verse that says, God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, but it's through the knowledge of God. One of the greatest knowledge of God is learning how to have patience. Amen. I mean, that's where the long suffering is. You know, the Bible tells us we have to suffer. As long as where the suffering is, we don't have to suffer, you know, it says suffer like Christ. Well, when I studied that, I found out that, well, number one, Jesus never suffered being hungry. So that means I don't have to suffer that. Jesus never suffered being sick, so I don't have to suffer that. Uh, Jesus, never, Jesus never suffered being broke, so I don't have to suffer that. Uh, the only thing I see that Jesus suffered, that I have to suffer, is persecution. And the word tells us that anybody that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Persecution when people talk about you. And they're talking about you for something doing. Now, now all the others said, well, he went to the cross. Yeah, but he, he did that for me, so I wouldn't have to go. Uh, he suffered pain and all that. He did that so I wouldn't have to suffer that pain. That, that, that's called the great substitution. But far as what Jesus suffered, he suffered persecution. So while you're standing there and believing God for God to work miracles in your life, well, the devil going to send all kinds of thoughts into your mind. Well, if God heard you, why come it's taking so long? You know what I mean? Uh, and that's why the Bible said, let patience have her perfect work. So that you might be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. That's where the suffering is. The suffering comes when I pray and I believe God based on what his word says. And then now I got to wait for the manifestation of that. Uh, it takes time sometimes for God to give something to you, especially if he got to work through somebody else. Amen. If he got to work through somebody else, it takes time for them to become to come convinced. I'm reminded <clears throat> I'm reminded of something early in our ministry, and uh, boy, we were struggling, me and my wife, and I had a little storefront church down on 21st and Illinois Street, and I'm going to tell you how bad it was. I had a storefront church down on 21st and Illinois Street, and we were staying in the back. Me and my wife, and I think our five kids was living in the back. That's how bad it was. And, uh, and we had got behind in the, the lease payments, and I had prayed for God to send the money. And I never will forget, and I'm sitting there, never will forget this, and I'm watching uh, TBN, me, me and my family, we're watching TBN, and I'm watch, while I'm watching TBN, the Spirit of God said this to me. He said, 
I have spoken to somebody to give you that money, but they ain't listening to me. He said, pray that they will listen. And so I prayed. I said, okay, Lord, I pray that whoever you have talked to uh, to give us that money, that they pay attention to you. Well, the next day, I'm talking about the next day, I get a phone call. Now, I had a board member at that time. Uh, he's gone home to be with the Lord, and he was the vice president of, uh, uh, of, a, <clears throat> of a trucking company, and he was the vice president of that. And I got a phone call from him, and he said, William, he said, uh, are you believing God for something down there? I said, yeah. He said, well, it's a funny thing. Uh, he said, the Lord has spoke to me several months ago about giving you this check. But he said, for some or another, it just passed my mind. He said, well, last night while I was watching TVN, the Lord told me to call you this day and give you this check. And, man, I went down there, and that man at that time gave me one of the biggest offers we ever had, which was $1,000, which is exactly what I needed. Amen. Well, how did that happen? Well, God has spoken to that man two weeks before. Two weeks, two weeks before I needed the money, God had spoken to him to give me the money. What was he doing? He was praying about it. He was saying, Lord, is this your will? You know what I mean? And all that. That's where the patience come in at. A lot of times God has already spoken to people to meet our needs or to give you that job or whatever. We have to stand in faith and wait for it to manifest. I've, I believe that's one of the lessons we learned in the book of Daniel. You know, in the book of Daniel, Daniel had seen something. And uh, the Bible said Daniel had decided to pray and fast for uh, it didn't say for, the, for how long, but he had been praying and fasting for 21 days. Uh, the Bible said he hadn't eaten any pleasant bread. That means he didn't eat no three-course meals. But he had been praying and fasting for three weeks for an answer. Well, the angel shows up on the third, on the third week, and he said, he said, from the first day that you have set your heart to answer me, I mean, to, uh, uh, to, to get an answer, I was on my way with the answer. But he says, but the prince of Tyree, which was the devil, withstood him 21 days, and he had to call for Michael, the archangel, that came. And so the first time that Daniel began to pray, the angel was on his way with the answer. Why did it take so long? The devil was trying to hinder that prayer. And that's what happens. When you pray and believe God for God to meet your need, he already said in his word that he has provided all things to us that pertain to life and godliness. But like I said, it, it, it ain't like you pray right now and instantly it manifests. Very seldom. There is a waiting time, which is called patience. And you have to have, let patience have its perfect way. But if you ain't rooted and grounded in the word of God, you'll lose your patience. Uh, or Roberts used to, say, used to have a saying about when you're praying for something and he said, and, you got, and, and your blessing is coming down and your faith is like a rope that's, that's holding this basket of blessing that's coming down. Satan's job is to get you to let go of the rope. In other words, his job is to get you to stop believing. So all the time while you're waiting for your answer, the enemy is bringing all kinds of thoughts in your mind and everything. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. Maybe it ain't the will of God, all this. And if you listen to that, you'll get out of faith. You'll stop believing and you'll miss your blessing. I found out that if you stand your ground on God's word, God's word always work. It always works. So I, I've, I've learned just to stand your ground and watch that word work. I remember as we were, as I, uh, I remember that with the Jesus house and we was at a crossroad, uh, whereas we had got behind our lease. And, uh, and so the owner of the Jesus of the, uh, 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 Jesus house at that time, he wanted to sell it. And so I, and he was asking $300,000 for that building. I had $25 in the bank and, uh, I'm in there teaching the guys about the faith and, uh, there was a realtor coming in showing people to, showing people to Jesus' house, and I'm saying, this is our building, this is our building. I never will forget, you understand, that I'm believing God. All of a sudden, I got a phone call, and uh, this was the biggest offering we ever got. I got a phone call, and some gentleman said, uh, are you William Bumpers? And I said, yes. And he said, well, the Lord spoke to me and my wife and told us to give you $150,000. $150, Man, I was floored. Of course, I received it, and so I'm still talking to the man. I work, worked all kind of deals out, and the person who we wanted to buy the building, he, he's not budging. He said, I want $300,000. He's not budging. And so now I'm looking for some other place, and I'll never forget, I'm almost ready. 
uh, to sign a, a, a deal for another building. And uh, all of a sudden, the Lord spoke to me and said, try him again. That's all he said. So I called the, the real estate guy and I told him, I said, look, and tell him we want the building. And instead of $300,000, we'll give him $250,000 for the building. I give him $100,000 down and I'll pay him $1,000 a month, you know, saying for three years. And at the end of three years, we'll pay the rest of it off. And he said, well, I said, no, I got to have an answer now because I'm getting ready to sign something else. And don't you know when I, I, I did that and he presented that offer to that man and he accepted it. And that's how we wind up owning the Jesus house. We paid him the $100,000 off and we had a contract where within three years we paid the rest of it off. We paid the rest of that house, that Jesus house off in two years time. Now, would none of that have ever happened if we hadn't learned how to let patience have its perfect work? We stood our ground, stood our ground on the word of God, knew that was our building. We claimed it and stayed there and God worked that miracle. And now we are in a debt free building. Jesus house is a debt free building. And so we'll be there till Jesus come. Amen. Or unless God just tells us to go someplace else, but we love it right there where we're at. That never would have happened. That didn't happen because of my genius. That didn't happen. You understand? Know, because we had a whole lot of money. As you know, we don't get no grants or anything like that. That happened. You know, and the person who gave us that money, I didn't know him at that time. He has now become a good supporter of our ministry, a great friend and all that. But I didn't know that. But God had already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. But it was through the knowledge of God. What was the knowledge of God? Learning how God does things. And the only way you learn how God does things, you have to be in a place where you can hear the word of God. That's the reason why the Jesus house is a nice training, guy, training ground for guys because those guys come in there from prison, from all over the country, and they hear from me and they hear from other of my instructors that are ex-convicts. We have lived the life that they have lived, and now we're living another life. And so not only can we tell them, here's what the word of God says, we can demonstrate what the word says by our lifestyle. And they see Christ living in us. And as a result of them seeing Christ living in us, it gives them hope to know that we can do the same thing because this guy did what I did and look how he's living now. That's the strength of the Jesus house. The strength of the Jesus house, let me say it again, is not me. The strength of the Jesus house is Jesus and all the supporting cast that he has around us. All of my uh, people, y'all stand, that are my instructors, all of them, y'all stand, is the reason why the Jesus house is so successful. All of our supporters, all that is the reason why the Jesus house is successful. I'm just a guy working for Jesus. And so, as I begin to wrap this program out, let me say, wherever your station is in life, maybe you lost your job because of COVID and everything. It seemed like things are impossible. Well, with God, all things are possible. You haven't given God your life. You felt like you didn't need him. Well, you're in a place now where you need him. I heard somebody say it once uh, when I was uh, in prison or whatever. Why you wait till you go to prison and ask Christ coming? What's a better time? I mean, if you're down, you ain't got nothing going for you. What else? Why not try Jesus? What have you got to lose? And so I've learned, you know what I'm saying, Jesus will take you wherever you're at. He'll take you if you're on top of the mountain. If you're the wealthiest man in the world and you don't have Jesus, you still don't have no peace. If you are the greater, if you have all the money in the world and don't have Jesus, you still don't have no peace. Jesus Christ, not only do he save you, but he gives you peace. That's the first thing I noticed after I got born again in the Marion County Jail. I didn't know what it was, but all of a, I always explained to guys, after I got born again, all the noise in my head stopped. What that was, the peace of God came in. All the, the peace of God came in. Now, and that's what you get when you meet Jesus Christ as your Lord. Everything gets quiet. That's because the peace of God it came into your, is coming to your life, and God has quieted them devils down. And so if you're out there today, if you ain't in prison, you ain't never been to prison, you ain't thinking about going to prison. You might be in a prison of lack. You might be in a prison, you understand, where your marriage is falling apart. You might be in a prison, you understand, where, you know, uh, uh, you, you got an eviction notice. God can step in that situation right now. I mean, right now and fix that situation for you. He can't do it unless you ask him. That's what being born again is all about. God cannot supersede your will. 
But if you will humble yourself and realize you need help, I need a help. I need help. I need a savior. I can't save myself. I can't get out of this. I'm in too deep. If that's you, then this message is for you today. God has already given you all things that pertain to life and godliness, but it's through the knowledge of him. You have to learn about what has been given to you, and you only learn that by getting into his word. So let's pray right now. Just say, Lord Jesus, you've already given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. I want you to come into my life and help me get over this. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Stay right there. I'll be right back. This month's special offer is The Secret Nation. Uh, this right here talks about the secret nation or there's a nation that are, in, that are inside prisons. In the United States of America, there's over one million folk that are incarcerated. Uh, and then you take those that is under the supervision of the Department of Corrections, and there's over five million people that's affected by the judicial system here in the United States of America. That is a whole nation. So this book talks about that. So write in, get your free copy. You've been watching Jesus Inside Prison Ministry present Jesus House. Uh, as you know, we come your way each week talking about uh, prison ministry and what we're doing inside prisons and the Jesus House. I appreciate you being uh, watching the program. As I said before, which I say again, thank you for all your support. Uh, several of you have already written. Several of you have already written in and got the books. I appreciate that. Several of you have uh, donated to uh, our ministry. I want to encourage you to keep doing that. If you haven't donated to uh, this ministry here, you can do it by Cash Help or PayPal, or you can just send your check to JIPM uh, PO Box 88489. No gift is too small and no gift is too large. We receive it all that'll help us on this broadcast, plus that'll help us at our Jesus house. Uh, as you know, we don't receive no grants or no federal mon money, you understand, because we teach the Bible. Uh, we are 1,000% Christian facility. We are a private organization, amen, 501c3. So I want to encourage you, uh, if you don't have no prison ministry that you are uh, supporting, feel free to support our prison ministry and call it caused it to be your own prison ministry. You know, Jesus said, I was in prison and you came and visited me and this would be your way of getting involved. So uh, as I bring it to a close, remember that my books offer, please get them. You can contact me by my website, uh, contact me on my email. We'll be glad to get uh, those books right out to you or send you some information on the Jesus House or have your application where somebody can come to the Jesus House. So stay tuned to next week's program. I got another exciting message. See you next week. God bless. Thank you for watching Jesus Inside Prison Ministry Presents Jesus House with Dr. William Bumpus. To learn more about the Jesus House, to receive books by Pastor Bumpus, subscribe to our podcast, and to support Jesus Inside Prison Ministry, log on to www.jipm.org.